Okay. Okay, we'll try that. We're going to cut some shims out. You know, just something from a machine shop, box lot, auction sale buy. It's got a precision hole in it right there. Oh, we're going to make some shims now. Let's get on over to work. This is what we got. This is what we need. One each. So, as you just seen on the bandsaw, this right here was in a box of scrap from a machine shop. You know, something that looks, I think that was probably a bit holder at one time. You know, some kind of fixture, you know, such as that and that. This odd piece of metal laid around. And the need was two shims. One with the long leg right there and one with the short. So, the, the hard part of them, they only need to be five thousandths. This is what we're going to use. Five thousandths brass. It's shim stock. It's some hardness. I'm not sure what it is. But, I, I just need two, so... So we can put one of them right down in this area down here, and it'll take up about that much space, you know. That's kind of an idea where we'll put that one at. And this one, well, see if we slide that in right there, like that, just so we know how much material we got. Okay, we can get two out of there. So we'll just put a hole uh, uh, about right there, and then down here we'll put a hole about over there. Okay. The beauty of this brass shim stock, you can work it with the scissors. And the beauty of this little thing right here is you get a nice hole in there to start with. So you put that right in there like that. And I'm just looking down in there to make sure I got enough material to get two of them. This is the secret of the whole operation right there. You all see that, that shininess on the end of that? That's one of them whole, you know, one of them center punches. You know, you get them, you know, at Harbor Freight or somewhere. And you put down in a hole and you strike it on this end and it puts a indent down there so you know where the center of that hole was. Well, they're really cheap and they're good good shafts to use for other things. And so what I've done is, is I ground it to a concave center. It goes in that way. It's dish. It has a sharp edge on it right there. Just held it to a six inch grinding stone like that on the center line. Went around like that right there until I had a, a, a indent in it yonder. That gave me a cutting edge. And that hole right there is a precise fit. Oh, it's really good. It, oh, it's perfect. It's a perfect sliding fit right there. And the, and the, and the, 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 the way this works is it just shears. When I saw that slot in there, slide that in there, then this just shears the hole lot. Test air punch. Let's, uh, th this is the way the thing works. You'd be well advised to build yourself one. And, and you just hold a little pressure down on it like that and give it a sharp blow. And uh, now, now we've got a hole in that. 
It's that little disc right there we punched out of that. Y'all watch this. Pull that back up out of there and then slide this out. Y'all look at that hole right there. That's how to punch hole in, in, in brass. You know, it's good on all sides. And now what we're going to do is we'll lay this. I'll show you. We'll just make one right here in real time. Okay, if you can see what I did. Uh, I, 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 I helped back just a little bit on the edge down here like that because that slots in just a little bit more. If you slide one of these original ones in here to kind of... And that's pretty much dead center. So, yeah, and that's what I ended up with here. Well, if I wasn't talking, I'd done have it done. But you line everything up here. Center line on the hole. And then you take the pencil. I've done marked this one up so much. Okay, let's cut that out. Okay, I, I would, I, I'll submit that right there. Let me see what I got here. Okay, uh, the other day, uh, somebody left me a comment that I didn't I didn't put one of my wells up there for everybody to look about and grade me. Well, I'm not going to be a mess today. I'm going to put this little shim right here on public display uh, here and now to be graded. You know. Now let's make another one. You know, if you wanted to make some little bitty Bryce disc, that would not be a bad way to do it. Shop made tools. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna that hole right there is up for grade. You, you know what I mean? Leave a comment. Let's see, we got the long one. We need a, uh, need a short one.
homemade tool. Okay, we'll do another one. Okay, I'm going to turn this in for grade. Homemade tool. That one's nine and a half thousandths. Let's see what we got just now. Three thousandths. Yeah, we can tune this engine right on up. Let's make some more of them. And that way, the, the beauty about using thin shims, say, say you need to put a shim in there five thousandths thick. Well, you don't have the option to adjust it later on. You can take that five thousandth shim out and put five one thousandth shims in there. And that way you can adjust it five more times, a thousandth each time. What I made today, a shop dog, Sam, from here, Metal, Tennessee, the geographical center of something. Now, y'all come on back, or we'll work on this engine some more. Type M International.